Hello my dear students, this is Akash HD and welcome to the ASD physics classes. Hope so you are doing really great. So students, in this video, we are going to learn the polygon law of vector addition and after that we will see very important concept how to see the resultant of multiple vectors are zero. Okay, so let's start the video and let's learn all the things. So students, first we are going to see here triangle law of vector addition because in previous videos also we have learned all these things but this basic is important to none the further things as i have told you polygon law and a zero resultant so what is the triangle law of vector addition of two vectors so see here it states that if two vectors can be represented by the two sides of a triangle taken in same order then the resultant of these two vectors is represented by the third side of the triangle taken in which order opposite order okay so first i am going to draw the two vectors in the same order so see here please this is the vector A, okay, and from the head of the vector A, I will draw the vector B. How can we tell these two vectors in the same order? Because, see here, please, see, this is the tail, this is the head, again, this is the tail, this is the head. So, tail, head, tail, head, that means A and B in which order? Same order, okay, and uh, if I write here the angle between the vectors here, please, this is called head to tail method also. So, from the head of vector A, the tail of vector B is there. And this angle is how much? Theta. This theta is the angle between vector A and vector B. Now, the resultant of these two vectors is represented by the closing side of the triangle. In which order? Opposite order. How can I tell opposite order? Because here. Now, here this is head is there and here tail is there. So, you can see this resultant R. In which order? Opposite order here. Okay. Same order means uh, Tail head, tail head. Opposite order means uh, instead of tail head, what is there? Head tail is there. Okay. So now this resultant is given by what? We know very well vector A plus vector B. Here. Vector addition is there. No? And the magnitude of this how much here? We know very well mod A plus B is equal to square root of A square plus B square plus 2AB cos theta. Okay. And if I talk about the direction, let's take the resultant is making angle alpha from the horizontal. Yes, then guess please, what is the this formula? We have seen in previous videos. B sine theta by A plus B cos theta. Why we have learned this? We have learned this because here A and B in same order, but resultant are in which order? Opposite order. Okay, now based upon the same concept, we are going to see what is our today's video concept. See it please. Polygon law of vector addition. You know very well, triangle is also one kind of polygon, three sides. A square is also, rectangle is also polygon, is it? But here, this concept will be applicable for the multiple vectors, maybe two, three, four, five, seven, whatever number of vectors are there, okay? So let's see, please. Polygon law of vector addition of multiple vectors. So see, it states that if a number of vectors can be represented by the multiple sides of a polygon taken in same order, then the resultant of these multiple vectors is represented by the closing side. Which side? Closing side of the polygon taken in which order? Opposite order is there. Okay, here also same order, opposite order concept is there. Okay, so let me draw here the vectors. I'll draw here the vectors, multiple vectors here, please. See, let's see. This is vector A now. And from head of vector A, I have drawn vector B. Okay, and let's take from head of vector B, I have drawn vector C. Then from the head of vector C, I have drawn vector D. And let's take from head of vector D, I have drawn vector D. E. So you can see very well, A, B, C, D, and E, all are in which order? Same order. How can I tell? Tail, head, tail, head, tail, head, tail, head, tail, head. So all are in which order? Same order. Now their resultant will be represented by the closing side of the polygon. In which order? Opposite order. That means instead of drawing tail and head, what will draw? Head tail. That means it will be like this here. This is called water resultant. Here you can see here, here head is there and here tail is there. That's why in which order? Opposite order. And the resultant is given here, the formula A plus B plus C plus D and plus E is there. Again, A, B, C, D and E. In which order? Same order here. Same order again I'm telling. Tail, head, tail, head, tail, head, tail, head and tail, head. But here in which one? Head, tail. That means resultant in which order? Opposite order here, okay? So in this way, we have to go for the polygon law of vector addition, but the formula will be applicable for the only two vectors here. If in case 
three vectors are there then what will happen that here first we have to calculate the resultant of the first two vectors then that resultant we have to add with the third vector okay so that thing we will learn with the questions and all that here so polygon law vectorization now students let's see uh, we have learned the polygon law vectorization but how to use it here now so here please this concept is applicable for the NEET and J exam see here the draw the resultant of the following vectors so here I have taken the vectors vector a vector b and vector c now and now what we are going to do first one we are going to do for the two vectors a plus b so these are my reference vectors are there so for this what we are going to do here for the first one what we are going to do we are going to draw a plus b we know very well here see this is vector a vector a okay let's just, just uh, let me draw with the same color here now white color i will draw here now let me take the white color here. so see here please this is vector a no? see white white vector a now from the head of vector a what i have drawn here vector b okay and now the resultant is given by this one here opposite order r1 okay so this is the resultant r1 equal to what is this r1 equal to a plus b okay now next one let's see please this one r2 equal to a plus b plus c again here please now you draw here uh i have drawn here see this is vector a from head of vector a i have drawn vector b and from the head of vector b i will draw this vector c let's take c it went in this direction here okay so a b and c now the resultant is given by this one here this is the resultant here in which order opposite order what you write here r2 so r2 is what a plus b plus c this is the situation okay remember that here this thing a in this direction b of course c in this direction here okay now next one see what is there a plus b minus c here so here what will happen that here is to c first i will draw here a this a is there for the head of vector b i will draw miss head of vector a i will draw vector b now i have to draw minus c because this is given here let me write here i can write here c this a plus b plus minus c that means with b i have to add a minus c how to get the minus c here see it minus c how to get it here see c in this direction that means minus c in which direction this direction just opposite vector minus c is going in which direction opposite direction of the c okay so what will happen right here this will be the direction of minus c here what is this minus c now just opposite to the c now this is going to the resultant here what to write here r3 here now so we have drawn r3 equal to a plus b minus c here similarly here a minus b plus c what i can write here i can write here a plus minus b and plus c now how to draw here again let me draw here the vector a no this is the vector a is there this is vector a now i have to draw the minus vector b c b upward that means minus vector b in which direction downward direction here. minus vector b here okay so see here now from vector a what i have drawn here i have drawn here the minus vector b now what i have to draw i have to draw the vector c vector c vector c in which direction going like this going like this okay so this is now vector c is there like this here see vector c is there now so now how to draw the resultant resultant we can draw like this so this is the resultant now just like a straight line just like a straight line here here it is going little bit curved there but okay anyhow this is the r4 here so i hope so you have understood very well how to do vector addition and subtraction by the graphical method because graphical method in some questions very important now great next one after that see here please now this concept is important in our 11th 12th everywhere okay so here please zero resultant of multiple vectors see it very well what is given here for the zero resultant is there see if a number of vectors can be represented by the multiple sides of a closed polygon taken in same order then the resultant of these multiple vectors is how much zero zero but remember that here here all the vectors should be in a which order all the vectors should be in a same order and they should make one closed polygon here okay so see here even if i do for the see this is vector a and if i draw here see vector b i have drawn here this is vector c and let's take i have drawn here like this here the vector d so you can see very well this a b c d all in which order same order see here please tail head again tail again head again tail again head and see again tail again head tail head for vector a tail head for vector b tail head for vector c tail head for vector d that means you can see all these vectors in which order same order and they are making what they are making one closed 
polygon here. So remember that here, underline the word, same order, all the vectors, same order. And what they should make? They should make one closed polygon. Then only what will happen that here, mathematically, this vector A, B, C, even D, this will be how much here? Zero null vector here. Remember that very well, there is no concept of opposite vectors now. All the vectors in same order and they should make what? They should make one closed polygon. Okay, so just for you, we are going to see some cases that is the important cases are there. See, case one. So we are going to see for the two vectors. Anyhow, two vectors, they will not make the closed polygons here for two vectors of equal magnitude. So very simple. See, let's take for example, this is vector A. Okay, and let's take for example, this is vector B here. Vector A and vector B here. Na? Polygon will not be possible, but okay, A and B in which direction? opposite direction is there. Even you can understand with the common sense also. So let's take one block is there here. Now one block is there, one block is there. Now this side force is 10 Newton. This side force is how much? 10 Newton. Resultant will be how much here? Resultant will be how much will be there? Zero will be there. Now so in the same way. So A and B in which order? Opposite order is there. So in this situation also what will be there? The resultant A plus B will be how much? Zero. Now A plus B will be zero. And angle between the vectors, can you guess and tell? angle between vectors is two ways. Think and tell. No? They are which vector? Opposite vectors. That means angle how much? We know very well. 180 degree. We have learned the concept of head to tail method or head to head method or tail to tail method. Now by any method you can get the angle 180 degree. That means for two equal vectors, angle between the vectors should be how much? 180 degree. Then only they will give what? A zero result. And this is a general situation. Okay. Next one let's see here. Case two for the three vectors of equal magnitude. So for the three vectors of equal magnitude, what will be there? Just guess what kind of situation will form here? This kind of situation will form here. Just one minute. No? What kind of situation? See, it will form here the triangle here. If I draw here the triangle like this. No? Triangle you can see here. In this triangle, what will be there? All these vectors will be in a which order? Same order. See here please. This is vector A. Like this. After that, this is vector B. After that, this is vector C. Can you see all the vectors in which order? Same order. Again and again I am telling because uh, here we do the mistakes. Uh, tail head for vector A. Tail and head for vector B. Tail and head for vector C. Okay. So in this situation again resultant will be how much? Resultant A plus B plus C will be how much? Zero and angle between the adjacent vectors will be how much? If we see from here angle between the adjacent vectors here is this angle here. Can you guess? This is the equilateral triangle. That means this angle how much? 60 degree. That means this angle how much? 120 degree. Similarly here, head to tail method is here. Now see this angle. Again this angle how much here? 120 degree. Similarly here, no? angle how much? 120 degree here. No? That means vectors will make how much angle? 120 degree here. So if I write here the angle, angle between adjacent vectors angle between adjacent vectors. What will become here? It will becoming here 120 degree or we can tell how much? 2 pi by 3 radian here. 2 pi by 3 radian. Even you can see here 180 degree angle. 180 degree what we can write here? Pi or we can write here 2 pi by 2. For 2 vectors 2 pi by 2. For 3 vectors how much? 2 pi by 3. Now if we do for the 4 vectors. Now 4 vectors of equal magnitude. How many vectors? 4 vectors is there. So here please again I am going to take here now I have taken here this. See here. Let me write here the square. Now, so here also what will happen that here? Let me draw here again. This is vector A. Now, this is vector B. Now, this is vector C. And this is what? Vector D is there. Now, can you see these vectors all in which order? Same order. Tail head for vector A. Tail head for vector B. Tail head for vector C and tail head for vector d. So here what will happen? The resultant of all these vectors, how much? Resultant c, a plus b plus c plus d, how much? Zero null vector here, okay? And if I ask angle between adjacent vectors, can you see angle between the adjacent vectors, students? Angle between the adjacent vectors. Again, now here, let me change here the color, no? So see, here head and tail is coinciding, no? So see, this angle is 90 degree here. Similarly here, draw the dotted line here from the head, 90 degree here. Again from head, draw the dotted line, 90 degree here. Here also, draw the dotted line here, how much here? 90 degree here, no? straight, 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 straight dotted. Okay, so here what will happen that angle between the adjacent vectors, how much? 90 degree. 
और वी कैन टेल पाई बाई टू और वी कैन राइट हेयर टू पाई बाई फोर दैट मीन्स फॉर टू वैक्टर्स टू पाई बाई टू थ्री वैक्टर्स टू पाई बाई थ्री फोर वैक्टर्स हाउ मच है टू पाई बाई फोर दैट मीन्स इफ आई राइट हेयर सम स्पेशल सिचुएशन फॉर एन वैक्टर्स फॉर एन वैक्टर्स ऑफ इक्वल मैग्नीट्यूड डायरेक्शन एनी हाउ इट विल चेंज बट फॉर एन वैक्टर्स ऑफ इक्वल मैग्नीट्यूड एंगल हाउ मिशल विदियर Angle between the adjacent vectors. Angle between the adjacent vectors. How much is two pi by n? Then only they will give the zero resultant. I hope so. All these things are very clear. Okay. Now we will see just uh, this question. See the question. For neat and neat. Directly we can tell the answer. See, there are n coplanar vectors. Remember that here triangle, square, whatever we have done. Na? That is all coplanar. So there are n coplanar vectors, each of magnitude v. Each vector is inclined to the preceding vector. That means previous vector by angle how much? Two pi by n. What is the magnitude of their resultant? Previous also I have told you what was there for two pi by n. We have learned in a which situation for zero resultant condition. Is it? That means what will happen here? The resultant will be how much? The students guess please. Yes, the resultant will be how much? Zero null vector. Null vector. Okay. Zero magnitude arbitrary direction. See here. Now. 12 different coplanar forces of equal magnitude maintain a body in equilibrium then the angle between any two adjacent forces how much you know very well for the equilibrium what is the situation we know very well for a equilibrium we have learned in a newton's first law of motion what will be there for equilibrium this resultant force will be how much zero zero that means What will happen next year? All these twelve vectors they will make one closed polygon in which order? Same order. So angle between the adjacent vectors. What is there? Angle between what they ask? Adjacent vectors because force is which quantity? Force is the vector quantity. So angle between adjacent adjacent A D J A C E N T adjacent forces or adjacent vectors. How much? Two pi by twelve. Like. Formula two pi by n n is how much here here n is twelve twelve forces are there twelve forces so n how much twelve so two pi by twelve two pi by twelve how much here pi by six radian but answer is coming here in a degree so how to convert radian into degree so pi by six into you have to multiply with the one eighty by pi so what will happen pi pi cancel pi pi cancel and here six three ja eighteen and zero here so how much coming here Thirty degree. The correct answer is how much here? The correct answer is here. Option B. Hope so. Very correct. So students, keep studying and keep going.